after a lot of data collecting and still more to come, it's time to put the FX Panthera on the rack and load table. Hi guys, this is Rack and Load and you may have seen the video of this in action, my first shots, go check that video out. But I'll roll in some of the footage of that into this video. Pretty impressed with this rifle. It is a bit of a game changer, there's no doubt about it. I have had some interesting results with it. Like I said, still ongoing. So there's gonna be one or two more videos come out um, on this channel about this particular rifle. But I just thought I'd show you where I'm at and sort of chuck out a full review because I'm pretty much, I'm pretty much there with my evaluation of, uh, of this rifle. And um, yeah, sit back and enjoy. It's gonna be quite a long video, so I'm gonna go into quite a bit of detail. So get the kettle on and make yourself comfy because this is gonna be quite interesting. Right then, so first of all, the FX Panther, there, and this one is in 30 cal. So this is the only one that I've tested. I've not tested any other calibers as of yet. No doubt I will, but this is the one I was sent from Sportsman Gun Center, so uh, big thanks to Sportsman Gun Center and big thanks to Livens Gun Shop as well because they uh, helped me out with the videos as well. And as you probably know, I work there, so always helps. And a shameless plug to them as well. So, the FX Panthera. Now, what I will say is there is something on here that you don't get with a rifle, and that is the spigot for the absolutely amazing GRS spigot bipod. I'll throw in a picture of that and you've seen it in the videos as well. That is an ongoing test of that bit of equipment. It is so cool. It just makes a rifle look so awesome. And it's just provides a, a different feel of shooting if you're used to shooting off a bipod when it's, you know, when the rifle's sort of hanging from below the bipod rather than sitting on top. So. But they, just ignore that, you don't get that with the rifle, but I've left it on anyway. So let's throw out some specs, first of all, on this rifle. There's quite a few to go at. I'll refer to all calibers, but like I said, this one is the 30 cal. So I'll read out all the specs and then I'll tell you what's different about this rifle. So first of all, oh God, where do we start? So your familiar sort of cocking lever that you get like on the on a lot of FX's side lever cocking, you can so you can swap it round if you want. I didn't, but you can swap it round. And the thing that I do like about this rifle is it is pretty ambidextrous. But I'll talk about that in a minute. Now the magazines that you get are you pretty much your standard, and now I say standard. FX magazines, but they are a little bit deeper. Well, what they've done, they haven't actually made the magazine deeper. They've made the plastic see-through cover thicker, if that makes sense. So you can fit longer ammo in. I'll get to that in a minute as well. So magazine type are those, the cassette style magazines. Shot capacity with the magazines. In 177, you'll get a 21 shot mag. 2.2 two, it'll be 18, uh, 25 cal will be a 16, and look if some, it, it'll be 13 in the 30 cal. The stock, the rear stock, as you can see, is adjustable mainly with the cheek piece, and what I particularly like, I can never say that word, particularly, like about it and as you can see it's swapped round to lefty you can switch it round to left or right hand hooray at last thank you fx about blooming time also you can adjust the length of pull by adjusting that bit as well we'll talk more about that in a minute i'm still sort of just reeling off the specs so zero angle grip as well so ar15 style grip uh, you can swap that out if you wanted to. Calibers available, 177, 22, 25 and 30. The barrels you can get. Now this one has got a 700 mil barrel because this is a 30 cal. It is, a, it is the Smooth Twist X Superior. 
or the STX barrel, basically. It has a carbon fiber liner sleeve already built in as well to make that barrel extra stiff. So the 500 mil barrel that you'd get in like a 177 or a 22, like a sub 12, like a UK spec, would be the FX Superior STX barrel liner. Okay, the 600 mil, you get the Superior Heavy STX barrel liner and the carbon fiber liner sleeve. I think you get that, yeah, that's with the 600 mil. With the 700 mil Superior Heavy STX liner and carbon fiber liner sleeve as well. Shock capacity. Uh, this is quite interesting. Oh, ooh, there's a lot to read here. Uh, I think what I'll do is I'll put that in the details down below because there's a lot. Of, I'll be here 10 minutes just reading that off. Fill pressure is 250 bar. Now, that's quite interesting. As you can see, and the first thing people will moan about is the little bottle and the low shock capacity in bigger calibers. Now, I was getting comfortably about a mag and a half. Yeah, about a mag and a half out of this 30 cal before I was re refilling. So it is what it is. We'll talk about that in a minute. Um, you don't get any optics with it. Uh, it's got a built-in shroud. Variations may sort of depend on what country you're in and you know, different laws and everything. The pressure gauge, now this is quite interesting. You've got dual pressure gauges, which I'll show you more about in a minute. The trigger is an adjustable match trigger and the trigger blade itself can be adjusted for height, rotation, and basically the blade angle, pretty much like on a lot of the FX rifles. Now, this is where it gets interesting. Energy. Okay. Again, there's a lot to there's a lot to go, but I'm sort of a lot to go on here, but I'll kind of keep it brief. So, right, so with the 500 barrel, I'm not going to refer to the 177, but in the 22 in the firearm rated um, power versions, you're talking 70 foot pounds with a 34 grain slug. And that's running at 960 feet per second. In 25, 80 foot pounds with a 43.5 slug at 910 feet per second. In 30 cal, up to 110 foot pounds with a 64 grain slug at 880 feet per second. The 600 mil barrel, 82 foot pounds. In 25, 91 foot pounds. In 30 cal, 130 foot pounds. This one, the 700 mil barrel, you'll get 96 foot pounds and 1,040 feet per second. In 25, you'll get 107 foot pounds with a 55 point five slug at 930 feet per second. This 30 cal apparently is running, according to FX's website, 150 foot pounds with a 70 grain slug. And that's going at about 980 feet per second. Well, the slugs I were using are secret slugs that I can't actually tell you about at the minute because I'm testing them out and they're not going to be released for another couple of weeks. Keep an eye on Instagram and and I'll, I will put it in the details of the video once that date has passed with what slugs I was using. But they were 54 grain slugs. <clears throat> and I'll put the details on screen of what sort of um, foot pounds and stuff I was getting with those. So, oh God, there's so many specs. So the overall length of uh, the 500 mil barrel version will be 965 millimeters or 38 inches. The 600 mil barrel will be 1,118 millimeters or 44 inches. The 700 mil, <coughs> excuse me, I'm losing my voice, is 1,245 millimeters or 49 inches, weighing in with the 500 mil barrel, three and a half kilograms or 7.65 pounds. The 600 barrel, 
will weigh in at 3.7 kilos or eight pounds 10 at sorry eight pounds 10 ounces the 700 mil barrel will weigh in at 3.9 kilograms or eight pounds and 55 ounces that is pretty much it right let's get stuck in guys god i'm bored of reading all that i'm not bored of it but it's just it's a, it's a bit boring for you guys me reading all those specs out that's why i throw in a bit of range footage while i'm reading all that off to keep you guys entertained right let's take it from the top then so what's interesting about the fx panthera then well the main thing is it's a bit of it's a bit of a game changer it's a chassis rifle it's got the bottle here rather than at the front. Yeah, it's got a pretty low shot count compared to an impact. The reason being, this is a competition gun. Would you really use this rifle for hunting? Yeah, you probably would. If you was running it off, say, a tripod or something like that. It's a bit long for sort of walking around a barn or something like that. I mean, I can barely fit it on my, uh, on my table here. So it's more of a competition gun but you could use it for hunting. It's got a low shot count. It is what it is. For competition, you're only probably looking at sort of 10 to 15 shots, you know, per round, depending on what sort of competition you're doing. This thing is aimed at like the PRS guys who sort of run, you know, like the, um, the 22LR, um, PRS sort of competitions or PRL I always get that mixed up it's kind of what it's aimed at hence I don't know if you've noticed here there is a barricade stop which is quite interesting it's a bit of a serrated barricade stop built in there you've got an Arca Swiss rail here so you can shoot it off a tripod if you wanted to loads of M-lock as well M-lock on top there's like a a piece here where you've got M-lock going over the top so you can mount a spigot like what I have for that GRS uh, bipod. A nice straight pistol grip, zero angle pistol grip they call that. You could swap that out if you wanted to but I think the position of the bottle you wouldn't really want an angled one because it's going to sort of interfere with getting your hand around it because of that bottle. Could you increase air capacity on this yeah you probably could fit twin bottles i think it might hinder getting your hand around the grip you can shoot it tethered because the um filler adapter is here in that position which is a pretty good position for having it tethered rather than sort of over here or, or underneath so that's pretty cool so that's your fill area there it's a very interesting rifle, but like I said, it gets better because what is very, very interesting is that this bit here, this is not just all shroud, this bit here is actually your plenum. So all that there is your plenum and the barrel or the liner goes through the plenum. So rather than like on the impact where you've got the plenum sort of back here, your barrel is actually going through the plenum. Now, what is interesting is this doesn't make this a rifle where you can swap out the barrel and change caliber. You can't really do it on this one because, like I said, the barrel's traveling through the plenum. But I think the reason FX have done that is to keep the rifle this shape, you know, keep it sort of minimal, nice and thin. There's, there's, not, a mu there's not much going on, really, apart from the bottle. Other than that, it's all pretty... It's all pretty sleek and slender. So that's what makes this a an ideal competition rifle because you can get it in barricades and all that, that sort of jazz. Right, get that bit out of the way. So, a nice soft recoil pad. This is an adjustable as well for length of pull so you can just adjust these and it will sort of adjust like that. I kept it pretty much how it was. I probably should have really adjusted it just to set me up. I was pretty much set up on it, but this is the beauty for me. 
the fact that you can swap out this cheek piece and spin it round. Oh my God, how good is that? Thank God, thank God. And also what I do like about this, it, compared to like the impact, is the fact that the magazine's up here. So it's a bit like a crown, for example. So your bottle is here, your filler area is here. Yeah, it's a small bottle. It's a 300cc bottle, I believe. So pretty small bottle, but like I said, this thing is, I'm gonna say it, this thing's built for speed. It's not built for long distance, it's built for speed. So I think that sums it up. Yeah, in fact, that's quite a good way of summing it up. It's built for speed, not for long distance, okay? When I say long distance, I mean, if it was a car, it's built for speed, it's not, it's not built for going on a big long journey. Does that make sense? Oh, you know, you guys know what I'm on about. Just in case you are wondering, riding on top is, and you've probably clocked it by now anyway, is an Element Optics Titan. That's a five to 25 times 56. First focal plane, I chucked that on top. It was perfect for this rifle. So moving along from the adjustable, uh, stock pad there and the ambidextrous i've got to stress the ambidextrous cheek piece that is polymer as well so it's nice and sort of um it's nice warm to the face it's not metal that's going to freeze your face carbon fiber wrapped aluminium bottle 300 cc so that is really cool then you've got the rubberized uh, pistol grip here this is a real nice pistol grip as well it's slightly fatter than your your sort of average pistol grip to it and it's got like finger grooves in so it's really really grippy really nice same cocking lever as the impact the nice chunky one with like the knurled uh, bits on really love that cocking the rifle is really really smooth as well magazines going really well what i've noticed as well and i think this is a real good point on the picatinny rail they've actually numbered the Picatinny rail. So if you see the slots there, I don't know whether I can get close enough. I've actually numbered the slots. That's really cool. It is a 20 MOA rail as well. Let me spin it round and just show you. Ooh, 20 MOA built into that rail as well for long distance shooting. And then this is where we get some interesting, I call this the dashboard. So this is the dashboard on the rifle. Okay, uh, I ain't got enough room. So you've got your usual sort of uh, power adjusters there, your fine tune or your quick tune system there, regulator pressure and your um, bottle pressure there. I love the way everything's sort of labeled as well. Maximum 250 bar on your bottle pressure. Um, so I didn't adjust anything on here guys. I've just used this as factory straight out of the box, running it as it is out of the box. I was the first one to use this rifle. So I'm going to be honest, I didn't clean the barrel, which I know guys are going to be screaming at me about. Yeah, I know. I didn't clean the barrel. I have since cleaned the barrel and accuracy has improved. We'll get on to accuracy in a minute. So that's the dashboard. I do love that. I love the way the, um, the gauges are, at, are angled like that. That'd look absolutely sick with digital gauges. I'm sure guys will upgrade to digital gauges and that'll just look so, so cool. So cool. So yeah, all your power adjusters there, all your, your dashboard basically is there. This rifle is fitted with the AMP regulator. What is the AMP regulator rack? Uh, right, okay, so the, a the AMP regulator is basically a really precise regulator. It's the AMP Mark II, and basically it, it just gives precise levels of, of air pressure, and it's just a single AMP regulator. Again, I'll put all the, all the techie stuff, I don't do techie stuff, guys. It's all down there in the details of the video. Um, so just have a, have a read through. Now, 
Oh, do we get onto accuracy yet? Now I was, yeah, let's jump it. Let's jump into accuracy. Cause you guys are going to be like, how accurate was it? Right. Right. There's quite a few targets to show you. And I did put pellets through this. Now these, these rifles are designed for slug shooting. Okay. Pretty much designed for slug shooting. So my first, just to sort of get the barrel a little bit le leaded up, I ran some JSB Exact, and these were 50.15 grain uh, pellets, just to sort of see and get this thing kind of zeroed. I'm running low on them, as you can see. So just basically get this thing zeroed, see where it was running. And let me let me get the uh, targets. Like I said, I've got a load of targets to show you. And I was shooting it on steel as well, just seeing how it was going. So, uh, right. Once I did get it zeroed, and I think you can. Uh, yeah, okay. So let me move them out of the way. So once I did get it zeroed to sort of how I wanted it, that was my first group. So this JSB exacts, okay. That was a decent group. These were all 100 yards. I don't know what I did there. I think I only shot that once and then I lost count of how many times I'd shot it. So yeah, I can't ca count past two, I can't. Then, it, I don't know, that it just went apart. It went windy when I was testing uh, my first initial test of this rifle. So it opened up there, 100 yards, question mark, don't know what went on. Then it tightened up. So that's a nice group. And then that was a half decent group new rifle so ooh, it is what it is so that was my first sort of serious target then i went on to i'll just show you the tin no you don't know what they are they're the secret slugs which i mentioned earlier and yes i've put secret slugs on the target as well so i'm not giving the game away these are the secret slugs now these are uh oh i've got Mainly three shot groups. I think I've done a four shot group there and a four shot group there. Again, at first, it was a bit all over the place. Okay. But this was using the slugs. I had to obviously adjust when, once I went on to slugs. But these were the 54 grain secret slugs. Three shot groups. Okay. 100 yards again. Oh, all right, that's three shot group. That's a four shot group. Okay, not amazing, I know. That weren't particularly great. Uh, okay, so I'm like, okay, it's a, new, it's a new rifle. I'm getting to grips with it. I'm finding out what it likes. But I thought, no, I'm just gonna stick with these, these slugs. And to be fair, they're the only 30 cal slugs I've actually got. So I kind of just ran with them. Then we went out again and which was quite interesting. It was, and I didn't do a target. Well, I did initially, but I'm not showing you. It was all over the place. I don't know whether I'd knocked the scope or, or what. I don't know what had gone on, but it was all over the place. And when I say all over the place, the groups were like that a hundred yards. I was like, what the hell is going on here? It was a little bit blustery. Whether that was affecting it a hundred yards, I mean, heavy slugs like that is it really going to blow them off that much don't know but i was struggling i get it i got a bit of footage you'll see the footage of the target they were just big groups i weren't i weren't happy about it so i went out again when the wind wasn't blowing i did some real fine tuning not of the rifle the rifle like i said is still at factory settings but i did some final Final tweaking of the scope just to make sure everything was solid. Then I cleaned the barrel again. Then I shot some more lead through it just to let it up. And then the, the group suddenly came in a little bit, a little bit better. Uh, yeah, they did, they did. So excuse the shredding on, on this target if you're wondering what that is. I had it next to a gong as well. So again, 54 grain... Uh, sl secret slugs these are five shot groups all of a sudden this hundred yards all of a sudden boom yeah i got a fly there that was me blame me 
half decent groups. Not sort of, you know, outstanding. I ain't gonna, you know me guys, I do not bullshit on this. Oh God, did I just say that? I do not BS. I do not BS on this. Did I just say that? I do not BS on this, uh, on this channel. Uh, I just tell you how it is. So that was what I was getting on that particular target. Okay, so there's another one. I've got another one, guys. Same slugs again. Uh, these are three shot groups. I think this was my trigger put. Again, it was weird. I'd leave it for a bit. I'd go and use it. Use the gun again, you know, after like a bit of a break. Decent group, but all, all of a sudden it just went off to the side and it weren't really windy. So I don't, I don't get that. Don't get that. Maybe the barrel's still been, you know, leaded up. I, I think that's what I'm putting it down to. De decent group. Uh, yeah, decent group, decent group, 100 yards. Uh, that one opened up a bit. Like I said, guys, it's BS free. This, this video is. Then this was my best group. I've got some real good groups on this. It's just weird. It was just a bit. Oh, I don't know. I can't get my head around. Look at that group. Three shot group. I could not believe it. Three shot group again. Again, sorry, excuse the shredding. Three shot group, that dropped a bit low for some reason. Another three shot group, and then that one went to the side. It's weird. It's really weird. I think I did do another, did I do another group on another target? Maybe not. It was, yeah, it was weird. I don't know whether it was, wouldn't have been, it wouldn't have been temperature. It was those last few targets. It weren't that windy. It, it, well, it wasn't windy. It was pretty much, pretty much just a, you know, a slight sort of breeze. So I did find it was a little bit, it was a little bit up and down on paper. But then sometimes I'd go, you know, it would be bang on on paper. Then I'd go onto my, you know, and then I'd, I'd fill it up with air, load the mag up, then go and shoot at my gong you know, just to get some footage of the shooting gong, and my gong's like that big, and I'd miss it a couple of times, and then it'd be on it. Oh, really weird, really weird. I don't know, the, but it's all part of the fun. Like I said, testing of this rifle is ongoing, but I'm just telling you the data that I've got so far. 30 cal, I mean, big heavy slugs. You know, uh, I only had, like I said, I only had the one type of slug, so maybe it prefers a different weight. Maybe it would prefer a better weight or a different weight of slugs, possibly. But like I said, testing is ongoing. Oh, so that's your accuracy from what I've got so far. It's all on camera, guys. You can see it in the footage, uh, the results I got. So interesting, pretty accurate. I think it could be way more accurate. I think it will be way more accurate. There'll be guys out there that are way better shooters than me that will get this thing a laser beam. But testing is ongoing as far as me, rack and load is concerned. I want to stretch this out once I've really got those groups really good. And I think they, it's getting there. It's getting there. I want to stretch this out a little bit further distance wise, you know, 200 yards plus see what it is capable of, capable of doing you know and I think that'll be interesting it'll be very very interesting indeed as you can see in the footage I was using a Donnie FL fat boy that was uh, keeping it pretty quiet because this thing is loud it is certainly loud and this thing looks sick as well with that muzzle brake on there look at that oh my god so I was running that thing on there just to make it, you know, a little bit longer because it's not long enough, is it really? Oh my God, this thing is long. But no, a cool, cool rifle, guys. What I'm actually going to do, I'm going to give the trigger a pull and I'm going to put that moderator on so I don't deafen myself. Well, it won't really deafen, my, deafen me, but it might deafen you a lot. So we'll put that mod on a second. That's what it's like with a mod fit. Oh yeah. And we'll give this trigger a pull. So I'll just cock it. 
and we'll see what the trigger is doing straight out of box on adjusted by myself so let's give it a pull hold your ears guys oh it wasn't too bad one pound 9.2 ounces on the trigger pull and that's on the 30 cal version whether it makes any difference um with with any other models, I'm sure it won't. The trigger's the trigger, isn't it, at the end of the day? But no, I'm I'm impressed with this rifle. I really am. It's been a fun rifle to shoot. It's it's been a yeah, it's been it's been different. It's been a bit of an experiment, I must admit. Um and I just love the fact that that, that is the plenum. That kind of blows me away. It's it's really quite interesting. Now, but a lot of people will probably think, well, you know, uh, will heat, different temperatures adjust, you know, make subtle differences to the, the barrel because it's traveling through there? No, it won't, it won't, because that plenum is it's just gonna be rock solid, absolutely rock solid. Don't matter what the temperature, it's, it's not gonna do it. It's, it's not gonna move the barrel in any way. So, but it's, no, just so, so, so interesting, I think. And what's what I'm liking about this Panthera, because this is the, obviously the first Panthera model out, I'm sure there's gonna be possibly more in the future, but I think there's gonna be so many upgrades to this. Now, admittedly, it's probably not as upgradable at the minute, or maybe I'm just gonna get in the, uh, the impact at the uh, at the box so is it going to be as upgradable as the impact this is uh, my impact here uh maybe maybe there's going to be some aftermarket bits that you can really sort of trick out i'm sure there will be i'm sure you know um saber tactical have probably already got stuff in the pipeline for this so no doubt about it but as you can see my impact is all saber tactical up I've got pretty much just about everything you can chuck on there and the form stock as well so yeah interesting interesting times exciting times guys for for a lot of air guns really you know and i love the fact that fx have come out with something a little bit different like this you know there's nothing nothing like this on the market at the minute um in this sort of styling air gun wise and i don't know it's going to be it's going to be interesting how how this thing sort of you know moves forward but yeah very very cool indeed i'm looking forward to trying the sub 12 one i think the sub 12 one uh i don't know it's are you going to be using slugs in that sub 12 probably not because it's just going to drop like a stone so i think that's why the uh, the sub 12 one will most likely have um you know uh i don't know would would it have a different but i'm just looking on the website superior stx yeah so it's going to just have the superior stx barrel in it in the 500 mil um barrels which will be obviously sub 12 so you'll be able to run pellets in that or heavy pellets but uh, yes a very interesting one guys so yeah watch this space i will chuck out some more videos on this like i said i want to do some long range shooting with this really stretch it out now that i've just about for me anyway just about for me nailed down accuracy um but yeah what a pretty cool rifle indeed there's going to be some uh some interesting upgrades for this i'm sure anyway guys i'm gonna leave it at that i think i've just about covered everything uh yeah pretty much have but yeah that is your rack and load review of the fx panthera your bs3 review of the fx panthera because i've showed you my crappy groups and some of my good groups but testing is ongoing but i thought i'd just share with that share you guys share that with you guys even so anyway, I will leave it at that. Thanks for watching, guys. That is Rack and Load.
See ya.